I'll even hire her as a boat. And then you'd fall in. And then I'd have to dive in the water and heave you out. What are you talking about, woman? You can't swim. Unless you've been having lessons at His Majesty's pleasure. Because jails are famous for their luxury pools. <laughs> oh, Charles, what a nice surprise. I thought you were on church business. Even vicars need a dinner break. You've had lunch together. We have. <laughs> My treat. Your mum's favourite. The best the shop could provide. Overpriced, but perfectly acceptable. <laughs> Hey, Charlie, do you remember the first time you tried a fish cake? <laughs> we were at Maitland Avenue. That's right. <laughs> we used to go to that department store every Saturday. He was expecting a proper cake, all buttercreams and sprinkles. And along came this soggy patty, and it smelled of fish. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a fish cake, Charlie. <laughs> uh, he takes one look at it, and he starts bawling and wailing. <laughs> and I had to pick him up, put him over my shoulder, and carry him out. <laughs> I don't like fish cake. <laughs> it's work. Huh? I've got to go. But you haven't eaten. Sergeant. <laughs> Warning signs, which I still know, so that was reassuring. Yeah, yeah, but what did they give you for dinner? It was uh, wilted pork and a liam full. Le lemon. Lemon full. Wilted pork? Well, it sounds like you. Deserved a fancy meal anyway for giving your evening up to brush up on your skills. <laughs> the NHS should be proud. <laughs> <laughs> Liam, uh, can I have a word, please? Uh, yes. Well, actually, it's for from Ripon with love. There was no course in Newcastle. I know you were with Wendy. So does Bob. Bob. Wendy. Kind of mummy complex, a midlife crisis. No. Well, whatever. You're still a despicable lech. Disgrace to your stethoscope. And in Betty Boothroyd too. Just keep your voice down. You haven't made this public, have you? Well, that's for Bob to decide, and he's in too much shock right now. This is terrible, isn't it? Of all my exes, I held you in the highest esteem. What a disappointment you turned out to be. I found it. You needed to attend to. Hmm. An excuse. Thought so. I'm sorry. It's my dad. His performance puts my teeth on edge. I thought you were going to try and give him a chance. I mean, Victor's clearly putting the effort in. Could meet him halfway. Mm, never going to happen. Oh, Charles. I told my mum what she needed to hear. I thought you'd accepted or at least come to terms with his past, the kind of man he was. You've talked about this. You haven't told me everything, though, have you? Charles. Maitland Avenue. A house. He ruined it for us. I feel bad about it. If Victor was a hopeless father, he was an even worse criminal. Overpromised, underdelivered. You don't mess with people like that. People? You met them? When I was 12. A bunch of them came looking for him. Mum locked the door, but they smashed it in anyway. I tied her up. Oh my God, Charles. They kept asking for my dad. She didn't know. She was crying. I begged them to let me go so I could fetch him. Went to every pub day he used to go to, every filthy gambling den. Found him, drunk. Dragged him home. All the while, panicking what they were doing to my mum. I still don't know. We never talk about it. Never. She stayed at home for months. Trauma is what you call it now. And Victor did one of his disappearing acts. So it's just me and her. I thought my job was to protect her. <laughs> so I stayed off school for months until the truant officer came by and 
Mum told them that I'd fallen in with a bad crowd. Then Vixo rocks up out of the blue with a bunch of flowers and uh, that was it. Mm. Like it never happened. That was my normal. <sighs> That's why I still feel like I need to keep her safe. Cause she can't see him for who he is. Just a fantasy in her mind. Charles. I can't trust her not to hurt herself, to, to hurt me by letting him in. He's starting all over again. It hurts, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. <laughs>